What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 10 of the Golang tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be doing is the working on the first step to our news aggregator web app thing, uh, which is uh, in order to aggregate news, we first need to be able to access that news. So to do that, we have to be able to read information from the internet, which is actually a pretty common task. Um, so that's what we're going to be covering here is how do we actually just pull down data from the internet. So uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to be pulling data from the Washington Post sitemap index, um, but you could use any website you want to use. Um, I'm just going to be using that one. I'll put a link to that in the description, either to that or the text-based write-up, which will have that link. Uh, if I forget to do that, someone like holler at me. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but but um, you really can use like any website. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean up. I'm going to leave the main function and then we can leave format and also net HTTP because we're going to be using both of those. <clears throat> so uh, now what we're going to go ahead and do is everything pretty much for this one at least we'll, we'll, we can contain within the main function. So I'm just going to tap over. And the first thing we want to do is get information from the internet. So, so generally what's going to happen and uh, we kind of talked about this with like the web app, right? Because we're kind of doing it, you know, we're on both sides of this equation here. So if we want to pull information from a website, we have to first make that request and then we get a response. And in general, that response uh, is going to have, you know, like a whole bunch of information, but it'll also have like, you know, the stuff that your browser is going to use to render the website to your page. So it's going to have like that source code. Uh, but generally that's going to be in bytes. So we're going to need to convert that out to a string so we can actually like use it uh, how we would like to. Uh, and then from there, at least in our case, we, we've got quite a bit of parsing and formatting that we need to be able to do from there. Uh, but at least in, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to try to pull down that source code. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So um, let's see, we're going to use format, we're going to use net HTTP, uh, and then we also need to use the IO util, so that's going to be IO slash IO util. So um, now what we're going to go ahead and do is first we're going to make our request. So the request is going to return two things basically. It's going to be a response and then it's going to be an error if you're going if you get an error. So it might be empty. Uh, but for now we're just going to use the underscore. So you're just going to use the underscore anytime. Don't forget colon equals. Uh, anyway, you're going to use the underscore anytime you define a variable that you don't intend to use. If you don't use the underscore, basically it just says like, hey, this is just throw away. Something needs to be unpacked to this, but I don't plan to use it. Because in Go, if you define a variable and then you don't use it, you're going to get an error when you, when you run the script. Anyway, HTTP.get, capital G again, exported. Uh, we're going to read in the link. I'm just going to copy and paste it, but uh, let's see. There. So, yeah, it's just uh, WashingtonPost.com slash news dash sitemap dash index dot XML. Um, just for the record, it's a sitemap that contains links to all the categorized sitemaps. So, like politics and opinions and then like tech and local and sports, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely not, no shout out specifically to, to, to Washington Post. I actually don't really read Washington Post. I just like it because it's got kind of a site map that leads to yet another site map and it poses an interesting task for us. Um, there are quite a few websites, but this is just one that I'm gonna use here. So anyways, um, and also just in case, especially for the future tutorials, um, this might change like, like Historically, when I've done tutorials using any other website, not just for parsing, but for anything like an API or anything, they've always changed or at least almost always changed. So just be prepared that this might not be the same as when I'm covering it now. So anyways, um, we do a get request. Basically, that just means, hey, we want to get some data from you as opposed to like a post request. Hey, we're sending you some data um, anyway. Um, and that's going to end up giving us basically the response, but then, but within that response, there's going to be the body. So we're going to say the bytes, and then also we don't care about the next thing. We just need to unpack it. Colon equals IOUtil dot read all, and we're going to read all from the response dot body. Um, from there, we need to, that's going to be in bytes as the name suggests, we need to convert it to a string. So we're going to say string underscore body colon equals string bytes and then we're going to do response uh, dot body dot 
capital C, close. Uh, so we free up those the, the resources basically for that made this uh, made the the request. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and uh, run that. I think I'm still running my web server, so I'll break that and rerun. Let's see if we got error. Imported and not oh we imported format, but then we wind up not using it. Eventually we are going to use it, but yeah. See, that's kind of annoying. Like, I know I'm going to use it. I just, I'm up to this point in my code. I want to make sure it runs, and then I'll use format. But don't force me to do this. <laughs> String body declared and not used. Okay, because we're... <laughs> yeah. All right. Um... Oh, and here's why I wanted to use format. So, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Format.println string body and then let's go ahead and import format now all right that was really enjoyable let's run that one more time hopefully that's the end of our errors all right and out the output at least in my case is that the sitemap so that's kind of what we expected so uh from here uh either you would parse things like you could parse html and um, at some point we might talk about parsing html in go specifically but this is xml so we're actually going to talk about parsing the xml specifically and then eventually get to the point where we can parse you know just the urls and then we can go visit those urls which are themselves sitemaps grab some more information that way we can aggregate news by term or whatever so uh that's it for this tutorial uh pretty basic but um but yeah, that's how you're going to grab like the source code of some information off the internet. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.